I think that if you stand up, stand, they will. Yeah. Folks, we're going to get started. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody to the um, to the lunch uh, keynote discussion with uh, Boris Nemtsov. Uh, many of you know uh, Boris was deputy prime minister in Russia from 1997 uh, to 98. He got started his career in political activism actually in 1986 after the uh, Chernobyl disaster when he began protesting the building of new uh, nuclear plants. Uh, in Russia, and since then has founded several of the pro-reform uh, movements in Russia, actually tried to run for office, for parliament, <coughs> ran for parliament uh, under communist Russia, and co-founded uh, Solidarity with Garry Kasparov, and actually ran for mayor of Sochi, where the 2014 Winter Olympics will take place, came in second, almost won, uh, and today is really on the front lines of the reform uh, pro-human rights movement in Russia. He's been written about extensively here and written extensively uh, about in Russia. We have worked closely with him uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, for the Foreign Policy Initiative hosted uh, Boris about a year ago, actually. Exactly. Exactly a year ago in New York. We hosted him at the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, we took him around to have a number of meetings in New York, and then we also set up some meetings here in Washington for you on Capitol Hill and with members of the administration. And maybe it would be helpful to start the discussion for you, Boris, to just give an overview of the state of the reform movement in Russia today, and specifically leading up to these important elections, the parliamentary elections in Russia in 2011, and then the presidential, 11, uh, presidential election in 2012, and what is Solidarity's plan? Okay, first of all, thank you very much, Dan, and Thank you, everybody, to come uh, today. It's a real great honor for me. Uh, and frankly speaking, I'm for the first time with so big amount of Washington people together. Well, no, Dan knows my biography. Sometimes I feel better than me. Well, he even remember about Chernobyl accident <laughs> many, many, many years ago, 1986. You're right. Uh, well. Um, Really, I uh, represent solidarity. Uh, this is quite new uh, democratic opposition movement, which was founded two years ago. And Gary Kasparov is one of the uh, famous opposition leader in Russia. He's my friend, and we are together. Uh, fortunately, uh, we have a lot of uh, achievements during these uh, few years. First of all, uh, solidarity did everything to fight corruption in, um, in the uh, city of Moscow. And maybe you know that we published a special report about corruption in Lushkov family. Lushkov is the richest bureaucrat in the world, $3 billion just. Well, and um, that is one of our achievements. Another one is our report about corruption around Putin. Um, friends, and we published the most popular opposition book now with one million copies, Putin Itogi, 10 years, Putin results 10 years. <laughs> well, you mentioned that I took part in the election, in so-called election um, in Sochi. Uh, yes, I did, uh, but it was not an election. Uh, this is like fraud, but not an election. And now, really, we face um, an election to the parliament of 2011 and 2012 presidential race. Well, first point, we, after, I can tell you, after 2003, after arrest of Khodorkovsky, uh, transparent and honest elections in Russia were over. No elections at all. Opposition rejected from uh, elections, uh, people from opposition movements did not register even. Uh, censorship on TV is 100%. For example, 
file in the stop list and it's impossible to look at me on the first or second or some other Putin channel. Well, um, they canceled governor's elections and now they decided to cancel mayor's elections to destroy municipal level, not even regional level, but municipal level. Well, and uh, Russian opposition is in a very difficult situation. From one side, we understand that this is not an election. From another side, if we do not uh, take part in the processes, who will recognize uh, what we want and what is our strategy, why we are against Putinism, and what is our proposal, etc. That's why not long ago, and this is good news from Russia, not long ago, um, we decided to organize coalition with um, Mr. Kasyanov, who was a former prime minister, with Mr. Rishkov, who is famous Russian Democrat, and with uh, Mr. Milov, who is a young guy, and Michael Osa of our uh, report Putin uh, Itogi and Putin and Gazprom, etc. And we decided to take part in, uh, first of all, presidential race and in, pre in parliamentary race too. What is go second good news that we came to the conclusion and to agreement that we have to nominate the United Opposition Democratic candidate using not exactly primaries procedures like you have in this country for many, many years, but something like that. Uh, at the first part of next year, maybe at the beginning of June, uh, we will uh, organize special congress for nomination of opposition democratic candidate. And congress will be huge. I believe that maybe 5,000, 500 or about 1,000 of participants will take part. It will be competition between candidates. And finally, results uh, will be under voting, right? Frankly, during the last 20 years, I don't remember any case when Democrats uh, come to such kind of, of agreement because of ego, because of conflicts inside, because of everything. And split it of Democrats are very important and very serious problem for Russia. And uh, I'm very happy that um, to to create coalition, we overcome such kind of split situation. It's the first point. Second point is parliamentary race. Putin established very repressive uh, law about registration of the party and very repre repressive law about elections. For example, there are 47 opportunities for officials to reject registration of the party. 47. For example, if you find just one wrong signature in one list, and we have to collect 45,000 members, right? If you find just one wrong, this is a chance to reject you. That's, but anyway, nevertheless, what Putin wants, and of course he canceled all of the opposition, we decided to register our party. Um, and we are under uh, this way. Uh, the first Congress, I mean party Congress, will happen in December 13, and we are under very strong preparation. <coughs> Nevertheless, what will be uh, a response from Kremlin side? We will do this. If Putin will reject us, and it's quite, uh, it's, it's possible, right? I don't know. 90% of possibility or 99, but it's possible. It will be very visible for Russian people and for the world that this is not an election because opposition is out of the game. And in this case, we will say that this is not an election and we will proclaim an idea of boycott, right? If, if they will register us, um, we will take part in the election and suggest our strategy, which is strongly uh, differ from Putin's strategy. You know, uh, our program is very clear, you know. First of all, freedom of press and real elections, come back to governor's elections, uh, real competition and open debate. Maybe you don't know, but we have no debate in, in our country at all. 
you know, Speaker of Russian Parliament, Mr. Grizlov, you know, a member of Putin party, the United Russia, he's a speaker, he said that the parliament is not a place for discussion. <laughs> parliament is not, and I can tell you that not only parliament, but unfortunately country, Russian, <laughs> is not a place for discussion. That's why the only policy which we can proceed is to go to the streets. That's why I'm a member of Strategy 31, you know, Can you explain what Strategy 31 is? I explain to everybody, and welcome to <laughs> Triumphal Square in December 31. We have constitution. Unfortunately, officials, you know, broke constitution and constitutional rights for assembly and for demonstrations and for rally. And this is a charter number 31. That's why different political forces suggested to organize assembly every 31 day. For example, the last happened in October 31. The next will be unfortunately in the new year. Well, I prefer to spend new year with my family. Uh, well, but may, maybe it will be the first case when I spend my new year in police station, I don't know. But uh, I had an experience to spend in police station several 30 first days, for example, but July. Can you, can you describe what happened to you at the last Strategy 31? I was arrested rally? three times. First time in July 31, I distributed this report among demonstrators and among, among Amon and police guys. What is funny that police guys are very interested in this book because I, because I explained that you, pr that you protect Russian oligarchs, including Putin and Abramovich. And you know, police guys are very much interested in that. Well, because they, they believe that they protect ordinary Russian people and honest Russian power. I want to tell you that corruption level in Russia is in the African level. Now we are in the 154 place with Ghana, with Sierra Leone, Zimbabwe, and Venezuela. This is according to well, like Transparency well, International. This is, this is Transparency International. Uh, last report, right? Well, that's why uh, to work with police guys a very important job for opposition. Well, uh, I was arrested during uh, distribution of Putin Itogi. It's happened in July uh, 31. And sex second time I was arrested in the Russian uh, flag day. We have Russian flag day in August 22nd and we decided to carry a Russian flag on Arbat Street. This is the famous Moscow Street. Uh, and uh, after that, police arrested everybody who carry a Russian flag, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is funny story, but two guys were arrested for 10 days. You know, we do not carry American flag. <laughs> we carry Russian. Well, next time I was arrested in August 31, bec with, uh, um, I took part in Strategy 31 with uh, European Parliament deputies, and they were shocked because nothing happened. We just distribute our reports and uh, that's it. But because of demand of political officials, you know, a lot of activists, mainly leaders of opposition, were arrested. But it doesn't matter, we have no chance. We, we have to continue. That's why December 31 is a day to protect constitution and to insist Kremlin and Putin to think that uh, Russian people have rights. That's why we, we will be in the December 31. What is important that even in the United States, there are few groups who supported strategy 31 in New York City and I hope finally, maybe after our today meeting in Washington, D.C., it will be great. Well, but we have the same uh, support in London, in Kyiv, I believe sometimes in Minsk, and in some European capitals. And this is very important, that this is international. Um, why Strategy 31 is so important? Because first of all, this is a common action of opposition from left side up to liberal side and this is unique uh, action. Second, this action shows what does it mean police state, what does it mean Putin police state, in violation of law and uh, a lot of brutal pressure to demonstrators, etc. 
And third point, uh, I think that such kind of actions are important to insist power to think about rules of law and constitution. That's why we have to, to promote this idea in the future, but I don't think that strategy 31 has to be just one uh, strategy. We have to think about huge rally, anti-Putin rally in Moscow. That's why the next will be in December 12th. Uh, this rally will be uh, devoted to Khodorkovsky, terrible situation. Maybe you know that um, prosecutors uh, insisted Khodorkovsky to be in the prison additionally 14 years. So he's, he's now at the tail end of his first yeah, eight he years. Spent, he spent, he was arrested in 2003, right? He spent in uh, Siberian Chita prison uh, and now in the Moscow uh, prison, he spent generally seven years. Uh, now it was the second uh, discussion in the court, Kamomnitsky court, about um, Khodorkovsky, and prosecutors said that he stole all of his oil. He stole 300 million tons of oil. It's the first news. Second news, he paid taxes for this oil. This is not a joke. And that's why they want him to be in the prison for 14 years. Everybody who is interested in the situation in Russia is shocked except prosecutor and Putin. <laughs> Wait, are people well, shocked? I mean, what is public opinion on Khodorkovsky? Because it seems that for some well, time Putin was effective. I explain it. Khodorkovsky is not angel, first of all. Yeah. He, he's he admits. Yeah, yeah. But, but he is not oligarch now. He was oligarch, but now he is not. He, uh, he is like a victim of Putin regime. And that's the that's public, why, that's that's public, why public people, opinion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Russian people even who hate rich people, who hate oligarchs, etc., now step by step, after seven years in the prison, right, Russian people recognize that he is a victim. And Putin has absolutely personal problem with this judgment. And he lost his health, he has a lot of problem in his family, and he lost his business because business uh, was now in the Putin hand, in Rosneft, etc. And that's why I believe that if we will organize public polls about uh, amnesty, for example, for Khodorkovsky, I'm sure that majority will support. Well, um, that's why a rally about uh, Khodorkovsky will take place in December 12th. And of course, this is a day of Russian constitution. We will talk about uh, rights which were stolen by Putin during the last 10 years. And uh, we want not only liberal opposition to take take part in these demonstrator demonstrations, but uh, people from social democrat side and from the left side. Well, um, I can tell you that because parliament is not a place for discussion, the only policy in Russia is street policy. The street policy. I am 51, right? I started my career from opposition side. I was anti-communist. I was one of the uh, leader of anti-communistic movement in Nizhny Novgorod region and environment, like I mentioned. But on the other hand, uh, and I was a young guy when I came to the street and organized rally and demonstrations, etc. Now I'm a, I'm 51, and maybe this is not the right time to go to the street. Well, but but what is what is opportunity to explain? I can tell you that uh, existing president, former president, Mr. Medvedev, right? He responds on such kind street, street activity. Just a few examples. First example is Kaliningrad. We organize huge rally with 12,000 uh, demonstrators, protesters in Kaliningrad. This is the western part of Russia. Uh, against corruption and uh, we demand to fire governor. Finally, governor was fired by Medvedev which is good news. Second news, which is concerned with uh, environmental problem, with Himkinsky less, Himki forest, right? Uh, our rock and roll star, Yuri Shevchuk, with opposition organized huge rally in Pushkin Square. This is historical place in the heart of Moscow city. Well, it was about 5,000 of people. And finally, uh, Medvedev made a decision to cut, to stop, to stop, excuse me to stop uh, cutting uh, forest, which is great success. 
Well, uh, the last terrible case, which happened just a few uh, weeks ago, I mean Kashan case. Uh, we have um, journalist Alek Kashan, and it was terrible, brutal attack on him. Okay, so and describe that. Yeah. So Alek Kashan is a reporter for... He is a reporter for independent commerce newspaper. And he was reporting on this highway... And, he, and he, I will explain. He is a reporter on one of the most popular and most independent unfortunately, this small circulation, newspaper, Commerçant, and uh, at the beginning of November, in the heart of Moscow city, right, uh, two criminals, murders, destroyed him, him completely. They broke his fingers, they broke his jaws, and they broke his legs uh, to show that it's impossible for him to print, it's impossible for him to speak, that's why they broke his jaws, right? And I impossible for him to to move. It was real shock in the country, and Medvedev um, was very much disappointed about that because he always talk about innovation, modernization, about <laughs> new policy, etc. And everybody understand what does mean new policy because more than hundred journalists were killed during the last ten years. And uh, what is important that there are four versions of this criminal, terrible case. All of these versions are connected with the power. One version is governor of Pskov, Mr. Turchak, who was a member of whom we've been Putin uh, youth organization, um, the young yard of the United Russia. Now he's a governor. Uh, another version is concerned with the minister of youth, Mr. Yakimenko, um, because Mr. Kashin described his uh, sexual relationship with teenager, while the third version is uh, with administration of Himki region, Him Himki city, mm, and the last version uh, is concerned with the Kremlin youth organization, uh, the young guy, uh, Yad of the United Russia, who published an, an information that Alek Kashin has to be punished. You know, they publish in the website that Alek Kashin has to be punished. And just after this day, terrible day, they decided to, to clean this information in the Kremlin website. This is Kremlin website. What is important that these four versions come to one guy. His name is Surkov. Surkov is responsible for domestic policy. I don't think that a lot of people here know him but everybody in Russia knows him. He's responsible for censorship. He's responsible for council and elections. He's responsible for atmosphere of hatred. And what is a pity and very sad that he's co-chairman of Michael McFall and Surkov Commission for Development of Civil Society. He's a co-chairman of this commission. Well, my view, uh, and this is very serious, right? Uh, there are a lot of discussion in this country about Jackson Vanek, about you know how to support democracy in Russia, how to support human rights in Russia, etc. There are a lot of talks. Uh, there are a lot of talks about reset, etc. I have absolutely clear idea, absolutely clear idea and proposal. My idea is that uh, Jackson Vanek has to be cancelled. First of all. Because, I explain it, because Jackson Wenig was about immigration of Jewish people from Soviet Union. We do not have Soviet Union, and we have no problem with immigration, Jewish and non-Jewish. But on the other hand, I think that we have uh, to press some terrible persons inside Kremlin administration and inside power who break constitution, who establish this terrible atmosphere of intolerance in the country, and do not touch the country. Touch terrible guys who break rules and break international agreements, which Russia uh, signed for many, many years about human rights, democracy, etc. And my idea that uh, a support of Russian Democracy Act is much better than Jackson Vanek. 
What does it mean, uh, support of Russian Democracy Act? It means that such guys like Surkov has to be in the blacklist and have no chance to get visa to the states and to Schengen countries, which is more important for Russian corrupted bureaucracy than the states. And their assets and money and accounts have to be arrested. I explain you why this is very important, because Putin Russia is a corrupted state. And Putin is not Stalin. Putin is a combination of Stalin and Abramovich, and Abramovich have more percentage than Stalin in the soul of Putin, right? That's why corrupted bureaucrats are very interested to travel in Schengen zone, in European countries, and in the West. And they have a lot of property out the outside of the country, a lot of assets, and a lot of relations, including these families and kids are outside of the country, and they have education, mainly in the, in the United Kingdom, somebody in the States. But I think that such kind of law, such kind of vet, will press much higher than Jackson Vanek and discussion about ratification about start treaty. I want I support very much start treaty because this is control, this is reduction of nuclear power, and this is more transparent more transparent situation than absence of such kind of treaty. I support joining Russian WTO because this is Russia become a part of, of a global economy. Liberalization of trade is in the interest of Russian economy and Russian people and the world pe uh, uh, and the society in the world in the world, but we have absolutely unpredictable and very cynical power in the country, and we have to change that. A conductor of Putin policy is Surkov. He's responsible for domestic affairs. He's responsible for everything, for blacklist, you know, for elections, uh, I'll repeat it once again, for everything. And I think that such kind of act with names, very concrete names, will be under discussion here. It will be very helpful for everybody. First of all, for Russian people, frankly. First of all, for us. Because a lot of people in Washington, D.C. ask me, well, Boris, how we can help you? Yes, we are for democracy, we are, we are for freedom, we are for transparency, we are against corruption, etc. How? I think that this is the best way. The best way, and very legal. Because the problem of human rights and democracy is not a problem of uh, domestic affairs. You know, we signed declaration in Helsinki that human rights and democracy is not a problem of domestic affairs. And that's why uh, they always said that they want to press to Russia, they want to be involved in our domestic problems, and this is impossible, you know, we. Uh, know better how to run the country, etc. We know this speech. Well, but this is against Declaration of Helsinki, for example, or, 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 or SCE, right? That's why I think that such kind of proposal will be very fruitful. One point which is good, uh, Senator uh, Cardin decided to promote uh, Sergei Magnitsky Act, and uh, Senator Cardin uh, decided to put 60 person who is responsible for Magnitsky death. Tomorrow it will be uh, one year when Magnitsky died, right? And this is absolutely the same, but not about, you know, violation in the prison, but about violation of Russian constitution and human rights. That's why such kind of experience you have already have. That's why that's great. You know how to, how to, to run it. When President Obama visited Moscow, summer of 2009, and there was a lot of pressure on him to speak out on some of these issues and specifically to speak out on some of these um, dissidents, reformers that have been imprisoned. He was asked about Khodorkovsky in an interview, and he said about the legal situation, the extension of the sentence, and he said it was, quote, unquote, odd. Uh, and that uh, it was, But it was improper for, for the U.S. government to intervene in the Russian legal system. You met with President Obama. Can you describe... Uh, well, I met President Obama. It, it's happened last year in Moscow in July. Uh, leaders of Russian opposition met him, which is absolutely great idea. And he talked about reset, and uh, we agree with that, that we need good relationship between our countries. Well, but uh, I uh, showed him mm, a bill, uh, an act uh, of Khodorkovsky, uh, where Mr. Obama 
he was a senator at that time, in 2005, and Senator McCain um, promoted through the Congress. This uh, act was devoted on Khodorkovsky case. And uh, I asked him very concrete question. What is your position now? Now you are not a senator, you are the president. Well, he was very cautious. Maybe like you described. <laughs> well, um, I understand him on one side because he is interested about transit to Afghanistan. He is interested about good relation, personal relationship with Putin. He is interested, but I think that maybe tactically he is right, but strategically this is absolutely wrong policy, because if you have, but because if you have, well, I'm not American citizen, right? Well, I, I can't uh, have open statement against Mr. Obama because uh, this is your problem. But, uh, <laughs> well, but I, I want to tell you that I think that, that in the interest of Russian people, we need democracy and human rights and rules of law. This is our interest. And we don't so naive to believe that Americans help us to build democracy in my country. It's absolutely stupid idea. Well, uh, on the other hand, to have democracy means to have predictable policy and predictable country in international affairs. That's why strategically, I think that this is a mistake. Uh, to close your eyes about what's happened with journalists, to close your eyes what's happened with Khodorkovsky, to close your eyes about violation of law during elections, do not pay attention on what's happened with opposition, uh, etc. I think that this is I understand that this is real politic, but on the other hand, this is wrong policy in strategical point of view. This is my view. I have another proposal to my friend, Michael Makpo. I talked with him several times. He's a great man, first of all. He knows Russia very well. He is special advisor to President Obama as far as Russian uh, affairs are concerned. And he not only knows Russia, but he feels Russia, which is important, because sometimes Russia looks like a mystery country and knowledge is not enough. Sometimes you need something else. I don't even know how to describe that. But he can, and he is a great, brilliant man. But I think that his participation in commission with Surkov, this is a problem of his reputation. If finally, for example, an act to protect democracy in Russia will be adopted, and this gentleman will be in the black list, how to explain American people that you were at the same commission as a co-chairman like Surkov? And moreover, this commission has a name to development of civil society. This is a bad joke. This commission has no ideas about such kind of development. You understand why? Not because of Michael, but because of Surkov. People who are responsible for censorship, how to promote freedom of speech. People who are responsible for, who are responsible for um, canceling uh, transparency, transparent elections. How to promote elections. People who, who uh, you know, broke opposition and who is responsible for Kremlin Hunwe beans and finance Hunwe beans. Surko finance Hunwe beans, right? How to sit with him at the same commission. That's why I think that that's maybe commission is good, like an idea. But uh, real life shows that to be with this gentleman means to break your reputation. I want to open, uh, open it up to uh, questions from the audience. Before I do, just one question. When so little is said by the U.S. government about the plight of some of these human rights and reformer activ reforming activists, you know, when, when President Obama makes a point or other administration officials, McFaul, whomever, say so little, how is that covered in Russia? Do people, do they notice it? Is it noticed that they were given an opportunity to weigh in and they said so little, or is it just not covered people, at all? People, Russian people don't care about that. Uh, first of all, Russian people don't know about position uh, and about Obama position concerning human rights in Russia and democracy in Russia. 
they don't know this position. For example, uh, this meeting between Obama and the opposition, there were no information in on TV, zero. No information in uh, popular newspapers, zero. Just internet, just live journal, uh, and just maybe commerce newspaper, like I mentioned, or Vedomist, et cetera, which is for elite is good, but majority of people have no ideas about these newspapers at all. Well, that's why peop Russian people don't know about that. Um, what is a mistake that if Obama believes that to close your eyes on human rights, etc., means to be a friend of Putin, this is a mistake. Because Putin thinks that he's weak. I mean Obama. He's weak. If he, do, if he doesn't want to talk about Khodorkovsky, he's weak. If he doesn't want about violation of law and constitution and about strategy 31, he's weak. That's it. This is a, a mentality of criminal guy. That's why if you, if you want to promote real politic, maybe it's good, but to be a friend, no, never. Uh, and one more point about modernization. Um, governor of California visited Skolkov not long ago, which is a real show, like always with Schwarzenegger, right? Well, why he visited Skolkov? Because, you know, he wanted to support Medvedev to organize uh, Russian Silicon Valley. But I want to explain you about Skolkovo. Skolkovo is the most expensive place in Europe. The most expensive. Russian oligarchs, Russian billionaires have apartments in this place. For example, Abramovich, Prokhorov, and Patanov. The most cheapest one square meter is $50,000. $50,000 per meter. How to promote Silicon Valley in this way? Why they decided to choose Skolkova? I'm sure that um, governor of California had no ideas about prices in Skolkova. I'm sure. But I think that this is Potemkin village. This is really Potemkin village. This is absolutely not about lie. If you want to modernize Russia, and I want to modernize Russia, and I'm sure that innovation has to be implemented in the country like China did, like India, etc. First of all, we have to modernize our corrupted Putin system. This is the first point. To come back to competition in political life, to come back in competition in ec economy, to come back in competition in ideology. If we don't, unfortunately, no innovation and no modernization happen. Nothing. Just PR and Schwarzenegger, you know, something like that. No more. Okay, I'll open it up now to questions. Yes, I think we have roving mics. And just say, state your name, where you're from. Yeah. Boris Efimovich, uh, my question refers to your political agenda. I am um, 100% for what you're saying with regard to the Putin regime and the current situation in Russia. But my question is, uh, if you manage to not, to, not even to come to power today, but to increase your influence in Russian politics, how will you convince uh, the people that your policy would differ from in, in, in terms of social economic conditions, in, in, other, in other terms, uh, from uh, what you were doing uh, when you were in power? Thank you. Yeah, this is a great question. I always got this question in my country. This is fine. I was quite successful governor in Nizhny Novgorod region from 91 up to 97. I was elected four times. In this very difficult time for Russia, to be elected four times, it's something, right? It's the first point. Second, I worked in the government, like uh, you mentioned, I worked in the, in the government for one and a half years. I was a minister of fuel and gas when oil prices were $10 per barrel. I had a dream at that time to have 20. I was sure that I if we will get 20, we will be like in Kuwait on the United Emirates. 
Well, now they have 90, I mean Putin, and we have 3.5% of budget deficit. Of course, this is less than in the States, which is great achievement. Well, but on the other hand, I want to tell you that from my point of view, to survive after bankruptcy of the Soviet Union, and Soviet Union was bankrupt in 91, and to have $10 per barrel, it was a very difficult task. And we protected Russia. Russia, uh, we are the United country. We had a lot of conflict in Caucasus, but we survived with $10. I can tell you that if Putin will get not 10 now, but 50, you know, million of people came to the street for his resignation. Believe me. And we were in the power well with $10 per barrel. Why I pay so big attention on oil? Because unfortunately, Russian economy based on oil and gas. If you look at the structure of Russian budget, about 50% of money come from commodities. Even more. That's why Unfortunately, I can tell you that this is like banana republic. If you have huge prices for oil, if you are popular, if you have $10 per barrel, you are very unpopular. I'm not very lucky man because it's better to be uh, deputy prime minister with $80 than when you have 10, but this is, this is my life. Any other questions? He knows Russia too, very well, the gentleman. Um, tell us a little bit what's happening in Ukraine, and uh, is, is it returning into the Russian orbit? Is Putin winning there? Uh, how do you see things? Well, uh, situation in Ukraine is not easy, it's quite complicated, but Ukraine looks, as far as democracy is concerned, much better. Um, of course, maybe Yanukovych wants to repeat Putin. He wants. And he's, this is his political dream and will. But Ukrainians 